I'm going to pray that we'd uh, learn great things today. You might like to bow your heads. Lord God, please show us now why that first Good Friday matters so much for each one of us and for the whole world. Please teach us wonderful things and show us how to respond to you. For Jesus' name's sake. Amen. Well, as we've heard already, we're thinking today about that day, all those years ago, when Jesus Christ died on the cross. A very important day. There are lots of important days, aren't there, in the world. We've got a book at home. It looks like this. And it's called Days That Change the World. And inside this book, there's a whole list of days, 50 in all, that are a very important days, so the author thinks. In the book is the day that Muhammad died, the man who founded Islam. In that book is the day that America was discovered. There's the day that World War I started, and all sorts of other days. The day that man landed on the moon. And the day that Jesus died is in the list. It's one of the 50. And so we look at a book like that, we think, well, there's an important day, just like lots of other important days as well. Now, I hope today we're going to see that the day Jesus died on the cross is not just another important day. It is the most important day that has ever happened so far in history. And it's so important that it changed the world. And amazingly, it can change each of yours and my lives this morning as well. So if you've got a Bible to hand, could you turn back to Luke chapter 23... I think it's page 1060, and we're going to see what happened as Jesus died. Now, God says that um, there are certain things about Jesus which we can be absolutely sure about, and he says we can be absolutely sure about them because of what Jesus is doing on the cross. So let's just try and imagine Jesus is about to be crucified. And he's there before, say, the cross here. And those who were gathering around him, the soldiers, the first thing they did, they stripped him of all his clothes. They took them off like that. And then they got a a pretend royal robe and they, they wrapped it around him. And then they started to sort of tease him. And they were really nasty to him. You can read about some of the things in Matthew's Gospel. And then they get this crown. I haven't got one because it would have hurt me. Made of thorns. And they plonked it on Jesus's head. And then they got a staff, a sort of stick that a leader might carry, and they gave it to him to hold. And then they knelt down and they pretended, Oh, hail, King of the Jews! And then they took the staff back and they spat on him. And then they hit him with the staff. It says they did it again and again. And then they carried on being nasty to him time and time again. That's all before he was nailed to the cross. Now the question is, what do you think Jesus thinks of people who do that to him? And it wasn't just the people there and then, actually, who are nasty to Jesus. You see, the soldiers and the crowd are not the only people who treat Jesus badly. There are plenty of people today who, um, who make fun of Jesus. Oh, well, if Jesus is so great, why doesn't he sort out the world? There are plenty of people today who uh, pretend to worship him. They come to church and they do the churchy type things and they pretend that he is their king. Some just hate the things he teaches. If you like, they beat him out of their lives so that he can't control them. Some people just think he's not very important at all. The day he died is just like any other day in history. What do you suppose Jesus thinks of people who do that to him? I don't know about you, whenever um, nasty things happen to me or people are are nasty to me, I think, well, I want to get them back. You do that to me, I'm going to do this to you. That's what I think. Let's just see what Jesus does. If you've got your Bible in front of you, look at Jesus on the cross. The first thing that we can be sure about is that Jesus definitely loves Jesus his enemies. The way we know that is because of what he does in verse 34. 
See if you can find verse 34. It says there that Jesus had just been put on the cross and he says, Father, forgive them. Now, you might know that Jesus taught people to love their enemies. He said, when people are nasty to you, you should pray for them. And we think, well, that's very difficult. And here we see Jesus doing exactly as he teaches. He definitely loves his enemies. He longs that they come back to God. He longs that they're forgiven. That when you and I do things wrong, and um, we all know when we do things wrong, Don't think Jesus isn't bothered about whether you come back to God. Don't think Jesus isn't bothered about whether you're forgiven or not. Listen to him in verse 34. He says, Father, forgive forgive them. He prays for the very people who nailed nails into his hands and feet. He loves his enemies and minds most of all that they be forgiven. What should he have said when they were doing that to him? He should have said, stop it, that's wrong. You're going to be punished very severely. He actually says, Father, forgive them. Don't doubt Jesus' incredible love because he prays for the ones who are persecuting him. And don't doubt Jesus' incredible love for people like you and me who treat him badly like they did. Now that's the first thing we're going to look at. The second thing is this. Jesus is definitely God's king. The reason we know that is because he stays on the cross. Hang on a second, I'm looking forward to my Easter eggs on Easter Sunday. He doesn't stay on the cross, he's risen. Yes, he is risen. He dies and God raises him. But for the time that he is dying, he stays on the cross. People there said, well come on Jesus, if you're so special... Why don't you get off the cross and help one or two people around you? And he could have done that. But he didn't. He stayed there. He stayed on the cross. Now, I need a bit of help from someone who is um, very small and light. No, that's too small. Oh, you're going to the crash. That's fine. Okay. (laughs) Anyone who's very small and light? Yeah, brilliant. Would you like to come up? William, thank you very much. Great. William, just come up, come right up here. We're going to come all the way over here. Brilliant. You've got a very nice superhero cape on. Now, if you turn, turn around, can you, um, can you manage to jump up on this chair? Brilliant. And if you just like walk, walk to the edge of the precipice. Well done. It's a precipice. Very high up. There we go. Now, what I'd like you to do is to, uh, well, not yet. We're going to imagine that these chairs are great, great high cliffs. I'm going to move this out of the way see what's going on. Uh, Imagine the chairs there are are huge high cliffs and at the bottom of the cliff down in the middle is a very fast rushing river and at the bottom is great danger. So don't go into the cliff okay just stay there for the moment and what uh, what William needs to do is he needs to get to safety. Safety is over here. This is safety okay this is danger and there's danger here he needs to get over there. So what uh, William does, he, he thinks, well, I need some rescue. And perhaps, uh, perhaps William thinks, what I need to get me across the gap is, is a helicopter. That'll do a nice job of getting me across the... Or if not, maybe a, a hot air balloon. Then I'd get across to safety. Or perhaps I just need some, some long jump lessons. Would that help him get me across? Uh, and and that's, that's the thing he needs. If he's going to get to safety and avoid the danger, he needs to get across with one of those things. Now... <clears throat> Is there someone who could be um, a, a bridge? Someone very tall and strong. Um, the entire Jack family want to come up. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps Mr. Jack could come. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Now, just come back, William, this way a little bit. Just uh, stay there. Yeah, just step down. Brilliant. Now, Phil, could you, um, could you be the perfect bridge? Brilliant. Come this way again, William. That's it. Well done. There we are. Now, there is, there is the rescue that um, William needs, but he thinks to himself, well, hang on a second, uh, there's no helicopter, there's no hot air balloon, and uh, there's no long jump lessons, so um, I don't have the rescue that I need, I'm, I'm still stuck. That would be a very silly thing to say, because the rescue has come perfectly, there is the way to safety, it just happens to be not the rescue that William was expecting. 
at the cross, the people thought they knew what God's king should be like. And they were pretty sure that when God's king came, he wouldn't be dying on any crosses anytime soon. So they look at Jesus on the cross, they think, he can't be God's king because he's on a cross. When actually God had said that the king would come and die for his people. So it's a strange thing. They think he can't be God's king because he's on the cross. The truth is, he's definitely God's king because he's on the cross. Now we're going to try this bridge. All right, Mr. Jack. No noise. Anyway, now William, you're going to, going to walk across. We won't tread on heads, tread on anything else you like. <coughs> Let's try and walk across the bridge. Well done. Brilliant. It's very soft around here, that's fine. <laughs> well done. Keep going. Keep going. Very good. Don't tread on the tread on the jumper, not the head. Brilliant. And a big step over the head. Well done. Very good. Hooray. Well done. <laughs> Let me go back the other way. We'll just check it so we'll go back the other way. <laughs> well done. Brilliant. Very good. Very good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going, keep going, brilliant. Uh, very good. We're going to do one last thing and we're going to stop in the middle, okay? We're going to stop in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Off we go. Off we go. We're going to go back to the bridge and we're going to stop just where the trousers end. Okay, well done. Okay. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Have you got your balance? Don't fall in the. Remember what's down there? Okay. Now, there's something else that happens on the cross, and it would be a bit like this. It would be like William saying to Phil, Phil, please stop being a bridge and come and rescue me. Don't don't be silly down there and get dirty. Come and rescue me. Don't be a bridge. Come and rescue me. Now, what's going to happen if Phil stops being a bridge and tries to rescue William? What would happen then? We splash. Exactly. Yeah, William would fall down the ravine. He'd be in trouble. If, if Phil stopped doing what he's doing, he couldn't save William at all. That's what's happening on the cross. Three times on the cross, there are people who say to Jesus, if you're God's king, then get off the cross. Save us and get off the cross. Just look at it in the Bible. If you've got it there, verse 35. You two all right? Hang on. Verse 35. The people stood watching. They said, he saved others. Then they said, let him save himself if he's the king, the Christ. Stay looking in the Bible. Verse 37. Remember in the reading, someone else came and said, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. And then 39, one of the criminals. Aren't you the Christ, the king? Save yourself and us. Jesus, come off the cross and save us. But if Jesus comes off the cross, he can't save them. That's how he saves us and forgives us. He puts himself on the cross and he he stays there. He can't stop doing what he's doing, otherwise there's no way for people to be saved. Phil can't stop being the bridge, otherwise William will fall into the pit and he won't be safe. Jesus can't stop taking the punishment for our sin, because otherwise there'd be no forgiveness for sin. So when someone says to Jesus, save yourself and us, They've missed the point completely. They don't get it. Jesus is definitely God's king because he stays on the cross. Well done, well done. Let's get you off there. Excellent. Thank you very much, William. You can go back. Thank you very much, Bridge. A very nice bridge and a very nice walker across the bridge. Jesus doesn't just long for his enemies to be forgiven. He makes it possible for them to be forgiven by being the rescue. Anyone who says, come on Jesus, stop being the rescue, they haven't understood that the king must come and die. Now all of that means uh, one more thing. This is where we've got to. He's definitely God's king. It means the final thing is that Jesus is definitely who we need. Uh, You may remember in the reading, there were two people either side of the cross at the same time of Jesus, two thieves, two criminals, both guilty, both alongside Jesus, to one of them, and one of them only, Jesus has the most amazing promise. Just have a look in our passage to the very end, verse 43. Jesus answered the one, I tell you the truth, today 
you will be with me in paradise. Jesus is definitely the one that we need because he is the one who promises heaven while he's on the cross. Can you imagine Jesus saying that to you? Today you'll be with me in paradise. We don't know the day that we'll die, obviously, but imagine him saying, you will definitely be with me in paradise. That would be an incredible thing to know. Uh, What is it that this criminal here knew that meant he had that promise of being in heaven? What do you and I need to know in order to have that promise of heaven to benefit from what Jesus does? It's beautifully simple. It's beautifully simple. Here's what you need to know. It's a simple A, B, C. Uh, Let's uh, have a look at it. Could someone come up and hold the A? Well done, Jax. You've had a good morning. We'll leave you for the moment. Yep, come up, Marcella. Would you like to come and hold the A? Brilliant. Thank you very much. Nice nice and high. Now, have a look in your passage. You've got the Bible still there. Can you see what the A is in verse 41? The A, the criminal started by admitting that he deserved punishment. Now, just stop there. That is a bit more than we might normally think. He's not just admitting that we've made mistakes from time to time. No one's perfect. He's admitting that those mistakes are against God. He says to the other criminal, don't you fear God? He's the one you should worry about. And then it's admitting that those mistakes deserve punishment. And that punishment is fair. We're punished justly he says and unless a person admits that they deserve punishment for treating Jesus badly they will never see the day Jesus died as any more significant than any other day so admit that's the first thing you okay brilliant could we have someone else to hold up the B yeah brilliant would you like to come up Charlotte here's the B see if you can find what the B is in the passage anyone want to have a look 41 and 42 verse 41 and 42 have a look for the B The criminal doesn't just admit he believes something. He believes that Jesus is God's saviour king. Uh, It's funny because no one else at the cross seems to believe that at this moment. But the criminal does. At the end of 41 he says, This man, meaning Jesus, he's done nothing wrong. He's very different from us two either side of him. He's perfect. He shouldn't be on the cross. We should. He's God's special saviour. And he prays in 42 and thinks that Jesus has a kingdom. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. He knows Jesus is the king. So the man admits something. He admits he deserves punishment for his sin. He believes that Jesus is the saviour king he needs. There's one other thing, the sea. Anyone want to come up and hold the sea? Brilliant. Yeah, Billy, do you want to come up? Thank you very much. Let's go all the way to the end and keep it in order. Brilliant. Can you manage to step up there? And Nice and high. Thank you very much. Excellent. Verse 42, can anyone see the sea? It's a way of putting it. Uh, He calls to Jesus. So in that last little bit, as he says, remember me, he's saying, Jesus, please will you look out for me? He calls out to him, he says, remember me. Only Jesus is the one who can help him. And Jesus promises heaven to that person. Uh, It's funny, isn't it? That criminal couldn't then have gone to church Uh, Couldn't have read his Bible and prayed, couldn't have taken communion or anything like that. But he's promised heaven because he admits his sin. He believes Jesus is his saviour and he calls out to Jesus. And he receives that wonderful, wonderful promise. I wonder, is that something that you've ever done before? Have you A, B, C'd? Is it something you're used to doing? Just in routine of daily life. It's a general thing, you know, you need to admit that you're sinful. You know you need to believe again. And call out again and again because we keep being sinful. Is it something you're used to doing? Thank you very much, you three. Do take a seat. Let's just put these up here. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Lovely. Well done, Billy. Thank you. Great. Now, as you um, as you go through for coffee, um, you'll see um, the information point just at the back there, and I hope you can stay for refreshments. You'll see in the information point some excellent little booklets. And uh, there are two in particular which are called, Why Did Jesus Die? Uh, This one is fantastic, and this one is for older ones. This one has pictures, this doesn't. You would be very welcome to pick up one of these. It explains again what it is that happened on Good Friday. Why is it good, and why does it matter for each of us, uh, each of us on a morning like today? And don't forget, we can be sure of what we read here. Jesus definitely loves his enemies because he prays for them. 
when they're doing their worst. He's definitely God's saviour king. He stays on the cross, otherwise he cannot forgive sin. He's definitely who we need. He's the only one who promises heaven to those who will trust him. Let me pray for us and then we'll sing our final hymn. That criminal again, he says, we are punished justly. We're getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Father, we know indeed our times where we have mistreated you or ignored you or forgotten to thank you. And we're sorry where we've rejected Jesus over our lives. We thank you that he is the Saviour King. Thank you that he stayed on the cross to take our punishment for us. And we thank you for his incredible promise of heaven to all who will call to him. Amen.